I'm Maria Menunos, and you're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Roxy, Roxy, what are we doing? It's all, it's all. Sean, I don't know. It's technology. My, my, um, my screen, you guys look, you're tiny as whatever. You're apparently in San Francisco. It's just, see, you ask, you ask actor types to sign into some willy nilly computer techno something. And this is what happens. Roxy ends up in San Francisco. Yeah, here I am enjoying my great outdoor experience in San Francisco. And I definitely did this on purpose. Yeah. Uh, I really, I'm the tech genius of the bunch yeah. and you guys should catch up with me. Yeah. Uh, Sean, but here's the thing, the show must go on and nothing stops us actors. That's what uh, Hollywood is all about. And we are, I'm experiencing our flustered behavior uh, by observing you and seeing the way we're moving, the way we're talking, the way we're reacting. You can tell a whole bunch about how we feel about things. And that's what we're gonna be talking about, observing human behavior today. It is crucial to be an actor. If you're an artist, you study uh, paintings and, and, and colors. Um, if you're a photographer, you're studying light and shadows and things like that. But for actors, we need to be open to observing people and human behavior. And we're gonna talk about all that today. And with me to talk about it is, uh, Miss Phenomenal, Miss Phenomenal, truly phenomenal, phenomenal as she floats inexplicably high above the Golden Gate Bridge. And uh, Mr. Fantabulous, Jeff Graham. Here I am, guys. I, uh, we're all talking about adjusting. This is a very new way for me to produce. And uh, so far, so good. I think we got through it. And um, everyone's looking great. I just love that Roxy's in San Francisco right now. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Good sir. As a peek behind the curtain, Jeff, I am curious. Am, are we only able to hear you when you say, should I patch myself in, or can everybody hear you? When so, you say that? in theory, the audience will know <laughs> best. Um, but I'm pretty sure during that time, only you could hear me. Uh, we'll watch the tape, we'll roll the tape back, and we'll see. But I'm glad I didn't say anything inappropriate. Roll the tape. <laughs> roll the tape. That's uh, Hollywood. This is fun. I love it. We're surviving, guys. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> It's awesome. So we're going to look, we're going to talk about my, what I teach my students about observation, how I build them gradually into even expanding into learning about using your imagination and creating ideas that you can plug into scripts that you're creating yourself and backstories when you get a, a scene that doesn't, has a lot of holes. So the observation is going to expand into using your imagination for scripts. Uh, then I'm going to talk about Twister, which kind of we had to do human be behavior a lot because we were just kind of hanging out, looking at the main people. I was part of the tornado group, and there's many scenes where we were just reacting to what was going on, even fake tornadoes. So um, we're going to talk about that. But before we go on to that, we need to talk about Sean's week. And I think we have to do the, the awkward Mr. Roboto techno version, I would seem, of Sean's week. Would you guys agree with that? 100%. 100%. Ready? One, two, three. Sean. Sean. I have no idea what came out of your guys' I mouth. No I can idea. barely hear mine. Yeah, it was crazy. It was absolutely. But for, for these purposes, perfection. Absolutely. I think we did great. I think we did well. Well, so last week, I mean, we did our show on Monday last week with Lisa Beach, but then Wednesday I had my final looping for the new uh, Walking Dead show, World Beyond. We did two episodes. Then Thursday I produced and directed a short film, one of my first sketch comedy shorts that I'm doing through my sketch class. Um, and then everything changed on Friday. Everything got kind of shut down. So, uh, and I was dealing with getting my daughter home from college and, um, you know, my coaching, my class ending, my coaching students uh, obviously not coming into my house. Uh, hopefully I'll have a little bit of Skype going on. So a couple. So Skype are you not having students come over right now? No, they don't want to come over and I can't because my daughter just came 
in Boston on a plane and technically she's supposed to be kind of quarantined for a week. If you travel for a week, you're supposed to be kind of set. So, oh, so she, she came back. Yeah, she came back. Yeah. So um, I'm doing Skype coaching. You know, I'm going to be doing that. But my sketch class, all my students who kind of live alone or with roommates all went home to their families because that, that's what everybody's saying to do because if these kids get sick alone, they don't have anyone to help them take care of, you know? So yeah. they all kind of splintered off and they went that way. Um, but really, uh, and I was talking to Jeff on this on the quarantine show that uh, TikTok has been the funnest social media I've ever experienced. I'm, I'm uh, having so much fun doing the silly videos, I'm finding out what works. People are loving any stories that I have from my sets. Um, and then what, you Can know- I ask you a question about that, Sean? Yeah. As, as we're going through this strange Corona apocalypse time, um, I'm finding that for, as like a comedian like yourself, it's a weird time to toe the line of putting out content on TikTok that is relevant and still funny, but not disrespect. I put disrespectful in quotation marks because yeah. it, it, I don't even know what we would call disrespectful at this point, but obviously this is a, a pandemic. So there's well, a lot people of people. Are out joking about, the people, people are joking about being quarantined and what's that like? People are like, I did one about, you know, um, right. this is a, I've got you, babe. And it looks like I'm talking to the love of my life and I pick up a roll of toilet paper. You know what I mean? Things like that. Right. So where of, are you having a hard time um, as an artist figuring out where is the line with what is appropriate, what is funny, and what is um, not right for this current state that we're in? Uh, I've only seen one person who did um, something that got a little heat. Sorry, that's my email. That's oh. I was like, I don't even know what that is. But no, yeah. it's my email. There, my emails are coming in because I don't know how to stop that. Maybe, maybe just closing okay. my mail account. That would be easy. Maybe I should just do that. But I don't You've think that's mail. Just kidding. Sorry, guys. Just make a little joke there. That's a pretty good voice. Thank you. That was good. I'm, I'm very talented. And see if that helps. Okay. So um, no, I haven't had trouble doing that. I did one just today of like me coming in the, you know, couples during the, during the, what are they else are they going to do? And it looks like a couple flirting and me in a wig and then me in normal. And then I did a big, they have a mob thing and it's like 10 years and nine months later, you see all these little kids going, I don't like my birthday during Christmas because it's nine months from now. So, you know, I, I have not had anybody say anything that was, you know, that was for me anyway, you know, I did it like- a You see celebrities like, like a Vanessa Hudgens getting a lot of heat right now for yeah, her she, social she media. I'm seeing, I'm seeing. Obviously she made other comments. I don't know what she did. Well, I can explain more later. I can explain more later, but you know, she, she did come out and she said that people are gonna die. That's inevitable. It's not that big of a deal. Like she had a, a long speech about, oh, okay. um, it, but she also has been posting yesterday. She posted a video that said, I wish I was at a pub right now, but I can't because like lockdown. And she posted that on social media. I think maybe trying to be funny, but people didn't think of it that way. So I just think it's interesting time for artists right now who are comedians, because I've seen even like the biggest stand up comedians on Twitter. They're trying to figure out what's appropriate to say, what's funny, and what is insulting to people who are incredibly sick or and or dying and right now one negative comment of the three or four mm -hmm. coronavirus things i've done like none so wow I, maybe i found uh, you know i did one like a, it was a silent movie of me washing my hands and i kept touching the doorknob and i couldn't figure a way to get out and trying to use the plunger and then finally i fell asleep on the floor of the bathroom because i didn't know how to get out of the dirty doorknob i mean so i wasn't really you know, I don't know. People, I haven't had any clapback. So maybe I, maybe, maybe it's just an instinct or something. I don't know. I don't know why I'm fortunate enough not to have upset anybody, but uh, I don't maybe think. Maybe we're, we're early on in it too. So you're, you're still reading the room and you're not stepping yeah. over any. Uh, yeah. No, no. And I haven't seen anyone. Yeah. I really haven't seen there. Like I said, I only saw one girl do something 
that was kind of inappropriate. She said, oh, I got coronavirus, so I'm gonna go see, it's very contagious. So she goes, I'm gonna go see my ex-boyfriend. And then that, that she got a lot of heat, you know? I get it. Wait, I see a little, little smirky on. I think that that's the funniest thing. It, it was so funny to me. It was funny to me. But I mean, some people, you know? But then she yeah. obviously didn't have it too. Do you know what I mean? I think there's a difference about right. the perimeter of what's going on. But we're observing human behavior on TikTok and how they're responding, which leads us into today's topic. But before we get into today's topic, Roxy, tell us about how the fans can help this show grow. I'd like to- John, maybe, maybe your best transition and we're not even in the same room. Uh, guys, says just something right now, do me a favor. Do me a favor, if you're home right now and you're practicing social distancing, picture the, the music that usually comes in right now. Picture how relaxing and wonderful it is. Feel the room, feel the vibe, and remember that you have many, many hours to do what I'm about to say, which is to rate, comment, and subscribe. No excuses now. You're all at home. Give us that five stars. Give us that thumbs up. Leave a comment. We read the comments every week. Because I am on my phone right now, I'm not able to access the podcast comments. So I have switched over to a YouTube video. I went back to check because I wanted to know about an episode around a month ago, making it short to become SAG, which is something that really um, affected me and something that I, I learned a ton about. Uh, and I wanted to read two of the comments on that page coming from YouTube. Uh, one, one of them coming from friend of the show at this point, Forrest Pruitt, who said, uh, great show, Sean and Roxy, everything you said it would be. Congratulations and thank you, Megan Williams, for sharing this with us. Um, Trap Country also commented and just said, amazing video. So thank you so much for leaving those comments, guys. And if you have uh, more comments to leave, don't forget you can do that on Apple Podcasts or on YouTube. We read every comment you guys have. And we'll be giving shout outs in the weeks to come to uh, all of the podcast users. I'll make sure I'll, I grab those before the show. So five stars, thumbs up, subscribe wherever you are, leave a comment. We will read it live here. And we really appreciate you guys sticking with us through this bizarro freaking time. Uh, at least yeah. we have each other, right? And speaking of the yeah. comments, quickly, I'm going to hop in. Uh, we have a lot of people in the live chat today. I'm sure you guys are at home hunkering down. We've got Weston Iro saying hello. We've got Glenn Caesar. Good to see you. And um, we even have a super chat uh, from Dom5271, who says, bro, people under the stairs, which, Sean, I'm sure you're used to that, but uh, you've got a fan here. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so I, did a, uh, I did a fun TikTok about a story about uh, that on, the, uh, on, on TikTok, because the, the, people are eating it up. It's like, it's so weird who you find on, on social media. So, and this is a new one. Totally. Well, we should uh, say thank you for tuning in. Thank you so much. Go ahead. Shout out also to Arpon the New Age in the live chat also. Yeah, uh, good to see you. Thank you guys all for being here. Yeah, we yeah, love you. Thank you. Um, Jeff, since it's a brand new technology and I don't have my time clock thing, you can, I don't know how you're going to let me know, but let me know uh, how much time we got left. Thank you. So let's jump in. Why is observing people important? Why, why is it important? Uh, because we as actors work off people's human behavior. Um, let's say if you're in a scene with somebody and you say to me, ask me how I'm doing. How are you doing? Fine. Now ask me again. How are you doing? Fine. Now that's the same words, but the behavior was completely different. One, you would say, you believe that my words and actions are congruent. And the other way you would believe they are not, right? So uh, we have to, and the only, the clue that made it different, not the words, the clue that made it different was the way I said it. Uh, my daughters hate me, and I've said this on the show a million times, a million times. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. Now, you know, they'll, whenever they say something and I go, Mm, I don't think so. They're like, ah, oh, I know it's not what they say. It's how it, but it is. That's the essence of the truth. How we behave is more truthful than what we're saying a lot of the time. So we as actors really need to 
observe how people behave so we can either emulate it, work off it, a bunch of things. And even if you're doing a monologue of a stressed person, if you don't really understand what a stressed person looks like, it will be more difficult. So you got to observe that. Um, it expands your understanding of humanity, which is crucial for parts that aren't like you. I, had a, I did a break scene with a student and she kind of came at it in a very interesting, it's one you and I worked on, uh, Roxy as well, the woman who's telling her boyfriend to go be with the other woman, even though it breaks her heart. Do you remember that scene? I uh, love that scene. Oh, you did so well. You did so well. You killed that one. Um, Thanks, Sean. This woman was being very tough. And she goes, well, I would never couch out of that. I, I'm not going to admit. And I said, yeah, I know, but this isn't you. This isn't you. This isn't a scene about you. This is about this is about this, what this woman's doing. And she, she felt there was a sign of weakness or whatever. So she didn't understand the behavior. But if you observe people like this, you will understand the behavior. Does that make sense? Well, Sean, yeah, absolutely. And a couple of things on that. Number one, obviously, one of the age old things that actors are taught are never to judge their character. Um, and so to try to find the truth in why somebody would do something like that, you need to observe people like that. And number two, question for you, Sean, is somebody who uh, has uh, probably 200 credits on IMDb at this point. I mean, you've done so many things. One how often, oh, whoa, uh, uh, how often do you, are you cast to somebody where you're like, Yep, every single thing they're saying and every decision they're making is exactly what I, Sean Whalen, would do. Well, very, very rarely. Very rarely. Very rarely. It, so that's where the acting part comes in, you know? So if this per, if uh, your student thinks that they're always going to agree with every single decision that their character makes, yeah. then it's going to be a very, very slim picking for the characters they're exactly. able to play. Exactly. So, so that's what helps us. And it also, as we expand this observational exercise, it teaches you how to think about what, because I take a, the uh, observing someone's behavior and then justifying it on different levels, it helps you fill in holes. As I said at the beginning, scripts, let's say you get a scene and they, they're not allowed to give you the whole script. And it says, you know, frustrated from the, com you know, you burst in the door frustrated, but you don't know why the person's frustrated, right? Well, you have to come up with some justification of why they're frustrated and why they're behaving that way. And that's what my exercises do. They deepen the observation of human behavior and make you make differences in things. Uh oh, having a rock. There I'm here. Go. I'm here. We just, just saw a picture of you at Disneyland or something. I'm, I'm watching the playback and I can see that I'm very um, sketchy. Yeah, so you're cho I, so choppy. So I. I tried to get off the internet and on the 3G, 4G, whatever G we're on, the Gs, the 4Gs. I, uh, I think probably I the internet know. was your best option, Rox. We, we can hear you pretty well, which is the most important part, so. Okay, I'll try again. All right, we're Rox going is back. coming back, coming back. There but she we is. Love Not back to the internet. We have a very cute picture of you with your little mouse ears. Oh, is that what's happening? Am I frozen? No, no, no. Now. You photo of yourself with your mouse ears oh you see a photo of me yeah. and actually it's much better now rocks actually uh the that really did the job whatever you did so good news yeah. so really? all right oh, yeah. so this is what i this is this is my process if you were a student of mine one of the homeworks that you would have if you're just starting out as i say i want you to go observe three people not together three individual people in three completely different scenarios and when they come to me, they go, oh, yeah, I saw a guy that was, uh, I mean, I'm just going to use this as my kind of thread. I saw a guy that was stressed out, right? And I'm going to say, okay, wait a minute. Uh, slow down. I want to hear you tell me everything you saw. What was their age? What was their way they were walking? Were they walking? Were they sitting? Uh, let's say this guy, okay, I saw this guy walking up the boulevard, let's say Ventura Boulevard near my house, hunched over, he had a suit on, but the tie was crooked. 
His hair was kind of messed up as if he was putting his hair through it a lot. His face was crunched up. He was talking very rapidly and using very loud, uh, very wavy hand gestures and a very loud, loud um, pinched voice. Now I never want to hear what they said. And I, and I don't want you to be able to be close enough to hear what they said. Interesting. On the phone. I just want you to observe them and see where they are. And, how, and, so, and then they're walking really fast and then maybe someone walks towards them and then they, they flinch really badly. And you go, that person is stressed because of all those things you observed. They're walking, they're talking, their demeanor, their facial expressions. These are the things I want you to look at a person and then say, I'm going to infer that's what a stressed person looks like. Does that make sense? Yeah. So uh, that's the first step. And so, so I'll have you do that three different times. John, can I ask you about that? Um, yeah. Because I think, you know, we've talked a little bit before on the show about different um, methods. Yeah. But when you're looking at somebody's physical behavior, yeah. uh, I think that it was Jamie Foxx that I watched do an interview about this, how he is a mimic and he is able to watch somebody pick up their mannerisms, perform like that's where it comes from, from the outside in for him, not the inside out. Obviously, um, Ray, I mean, amazing, right? So is that something in this you're trying to almost um, figure out what are the mannerisms so that you can work from the outside in because you see a stressed person tap their foot. Maybe you start tapping your foot. Maybe it makes you feel more stressed. Well, it's it's really just kind of going into your bank. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it, I guess it's not necessarily outside in because I, you know, as you know, I come from Meisner, but you're working off of that behavior. Um, so so it's just it's actually just teaching you to notice what you're getting off of it. And we may be wrong. He may be excited about getting and learning that his wife's having a baby, but right. it doesn't matter. It's more that we're observing and inferring something from that behavior. So it's, you'll see it, it, it becomes how it affects you. Cause you'll see how I turn it towards you, but you can't really feel anything off of someone else unless you know what you're getting or have an opinion on what they're getting. Mm -hmm. so, so then secondly, I do say, do the same with two people, right? Do the same with two people. I want you to see what, but the two people, I'm sorry, are interacting. Two people that are interacting. So you're gonna look at, let's say the stressed out guy, but now we see a woman behind him just kind of rolling her eyes, walking, shaking her head, and thinking, uh, there's your picture again. Uh, thinking that, oh, we just saw your room for two seconds. Uh, you saw my room? For two seconds, yeah, then you're back in San Francisco. Um, but then, Did it look like a white wall? <laughs> yeah. Bring back the room. Bring back the room. But then, but then I want you to see how they're affecting each other. Maybe the stress, so you see the woman and the man, and then the man is, uh, making this woman annoyed. And why do we know she's annoyed? So you're going to say she's rolling her eyes. She's looking at him, shaking her head. He's taking deep sighs, you know, and she's 20 yards behind him, right? So then that's the next step. I have you do a few of those. Two people, how they're interacting, what each person is, and how you think the other person is affecting the other person. So then we take it another step further. Wait, Sean, for that step, yeah. for step two, does it matter if those people are like people or unlike people? Do you need them to be too, like, are you looking for older, younger, boy, girl, no. or does it just doesn't matter? Doesn't no, matter. but they have to be interacting. And one that I always use a lot is say, listen, go to the grocery store and look at the people checking out and see how the checker handles them. Is the checker happy? You know, is that, is that, is that, is that person letting stuff in if someone's being really rude to the checkout person at the grocery store you know what i mean so yes yeah so then um well, we can hear some stuff 
Uh, so then, if the fans at home can't hear that, then then I'm so sorry, but I have to acknowledge. It. All good. Yeah. The fans cannot. Luckily, it's uh, just you guys, and I'm figuring out. I think I can mute myself on this end as well. Again, y'all are very patient as we deal with Corona, but that's what we do at After Buzz TV. We're bringing you this content all the time. Uh, I'm proud yeah. we're powering through, and I figured out how you guys also don't have to hear our production initiatives. So. Figuring it out, I'll get the go. I also will say um, we are not seeing my room. We were seeing Jeff's monitors behind him. Copy there that. You. Copy that. It's zoomed in for some reason. That's John, the, continue. I want to know what the third step is. The yes. third step is then I want you to observe these two people, how they interact, and then I want you to, because I forgot this until I just started speaking today, I want you to start, how does it make you feel? observing them okay the stressed out husband the rolling the eyes wife and then so you're going to describe all that to me how you think they're affecting each other and how does it make you feel it made me feel sad for her it made me feel stressed seeing him and sort of it made me get uh frustrated because uh the man should be nicer to this woman you know i want to mm -hmm then take it to you. How does observing that make you feel? So that becomes, that's the step, Roxy, where it becomes more Meisner. You know what I mean? Right. That sounds like the first Meisner uh, yeah, approach of it. But let me ask you this. How often do you find that the person observing takes on, as an empath, the feelings of one of the two people they're observing? Uh, so it, it, it depends on the person. Because I... My, my most, I remember the one that just sticks out was a student of mine who sat next to a couple who they were just older, but they sat there quietly. They weren't quietly on their phones. They were just quietly eating. It seemed like they were either just in a fight or something that was very tense. And she was sitting right next to them. And she said it made her feel really uncomfortable and really- But they probably didn't feel uncomfortable. They were probably doing their thing. You know, right. they're mad at each other. They just had a fight or whatever. So that's the next step is to say, how does it make you feel? Okay. So then the next step after that is I want you to add a simple justification to what you're seeing. So the couple walking up the street really fast and the, and the woman behind rolling her eyes, let's say... They're late, uh, they're late for a meeting. They're late for a meeting. And that's the, and so then I'm gonna say, how did it make you feel? And what did you think justified that behavior? They're going to a meeting and they're running late. It bothers her, him, it doesn't bother her. And so that's what, it, then the next step is to just tell me what you're observing in terms of behavior, how they're affecting each other, how does it make you feel, and give me a simple justification. Okay, on what you think. Now, now we're starting to expand it into your imagination. Because that's it sounds like it is a kind of an interesting um, writer's activity as well. As well, yeah. I can't see that, Jeff. What does that say? Okay, I got it. All right, so then. Uh, you see Jeff, I don't even see Jeff. Oh, I can see Jeff. Well, <laughs> you know, here we are. I lost I'm Jeff. Computer, though. I'm on a computer. Oh, maybe that's why. That's why <laughs> So then the next step is then you add, uh, so you've done all this stuff. So right, it starts to expand into observation and then imagination. I should call this a Mabza observation. Yeah, I think that name's really gonna stick. Yeah, don't you think? Because it? it rolls Copyright up. Copyright it. Yeah, Super patent that now. Copyright something you know you got to make sure nobody uh, steals that from you. guys i think it's um right obs, obs imagination uh, right but then what i want you to do and this is the hardest part because then you come to me with homework so i don't make you do three anymore and i say okay what did you see how were, and i still make you say oh well i saw this guy he was pissed off and the woman followed no you still have to say he was doing this he was doing that he was older because I, I do want to know age and uh race never really matters but really age does help you know because then you can say oh it's a 
it's a grandfather and his daughter. Or, or well, I guess race might matter if it's relevant to your scene. Like it's relevant the to the you're seeing or something like that. But so, or right, if there is a cultural yeah. thing that you come up with, this is the next step. Is right. say what you observe, say how they affect each other, say how it made you feel, give me the simple justification, but then you give me, I want you to create a backstory. What is the story? So here's my story for the stressed guy. Jim knows that he is gonna get this promotion and he doesn't wanna get to this meeting that he's going to. He does not want to be late because it's his first time in this leadership role. And Joanne knows that she got passed over and is pissed that she didn't get the job. So she has to go there and smile grimly at this meeting while they announce that Jim's getting the job. And that's why he's so stressed to make sure he gets there on time. And she doesn't care because she knows she's pissed off. And you have to come up with this whole justification backstory that has to be synergistic with what we're seeing. Sean, it sounds like that. I don't know if you've seen that commercial. What is it for? Indeed or one of those job site services. Yes. You literally yeah. just described with a woman. You see, yeah, that it's woman. the first time she's been passed over, but it will be the last time that she's been passed over. Exactly. Exactly. It's that, yeah. I did That's not, kind of what I storytellers do when you have to do something in an abridged version. Right. You create a backstory. But the whole point is that now that make sure that that backstory fits. Because I had a, I had a guy saying he was watching these people play Frisbee golf and they came through and they were really happy together and giggled and they played through these guys playing frisbee golf and they were really lovey dovey or whatever and then he said yeah and they just got in a fight and, da, da, da. and i said well now wait a minute you said their behavior was lovey dovey so you there's no behavior that indicates they got into a fight so it has to it still has to fit what you see you've judged my caption contests when we get down to the end and you know, I, I, if you guys don't know, on Facebook I do caption contests where I put funny pictures of me, and then you have to come up with a caption. At the end, when it's getting tough, right? We have to say, yeah, but does it match the picture? Right. It's funny in general, but it doesn't match the picture. So that's really what it is. It has to match the picture and what you're seeing. So that's my, the way I teach people how to observe, because then you can look at things, you know, and. Uh, you know, they did an Annie Hall where they're sitting there watching people, you know, people watching, but you come up with this whole story based on behaviors. And it really strengthens your way, your, uh, an understanding of people. So you can do the Jimmy Fox where you understand what someone might look like. Um, and, and like if I had a nerdy, uh, older Jewish man to play, my ex-father-in-law rest in peace he passed away but i would have so many specific behaviors just because i observed him for so many years right so that right. way you can help you play a role like you're saying but it can also really expand your imagination and work off the world you literally have acting exercises every day and here's the best i was walking down and it's not funny it's not funny it's unfortunate uh, but I was walking down the street and the guy was coming to me and I had a tickle in my throat and it was literally like, uh, like a thing of dust in my throat. And I just went, Puh! and the guy looked at me like in these times right now, when they're saying coughing is, not, he gave me the, he looked at me and, shook me and was like, oh, and I knew right away. I go, I, I wanted to chase him. I was with my girlfriend. But I wanted to chase him and go, no, 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 no. I, I swear I wasn't, I wasn't not covering my mouth or doing the proper protocol. It was literally just a tickle. But you know, you feel so badly. But of course, he's seeing a person in these times walk and just cough out into the air, and, which is uncool right now. It's not okay right now. Yeah, you're not cool, Sean. You're not I'm cool. I'm not cool. I was that but, guy. But can I tell you what? You might not think you're cool, but for some reason in the chat now, Weston Iris says Sean sounds like an ex-spy. Wow. 
So that you've got to be cool to be an ex-spy. Well, I, I can't, let's just say, I shan't speak of that. <laughs> Sean, CIA, I can see it now. Yeah, you know me, you can see it. But, but so, so that's my kind of observation slash imagination course that I do. And it's a good way for you to test yourself. Do, it, do the one person for a week, write down about three or five, then do it with the two people, then do it with how they affect each other. I mean, how they affect each other, then do the justification, uh, simple justification, then how it makes you feel, and then come up with a big backstory. And just test yeah. yourself, because that will help you in your acting. If you know stories and you understand, and people always say to me, you know, even you, Roxy, would say, how did you get all that from just reading those few words? Do you know what I mean? Right. You think it was I told you that story? Maybe I said it on the show one time when when uh, Meryl Streep was doing Bridges of Madison County. It always fascinated me. She said when she says goodbye to Clint Eastwood for the first time, she's flirting. She brushed her hand on her on her butt uh, to pretend to wipe something from her butt or something, like get some dust off and stuff. And she goes, well, a woman does that. It was, she likes to show a little attention to her curves. And I went, I didn't know that. Do you know what I mean? I, and and that was just a tiny little piece of behavior that she was saying, I'm flirting with you. Mm -hmm. I like more than just a friend. And I would never know that, you know? And I asked my girlfriend, is that true? She's like, yeah, sometimes, you know what I mean? And yeah. so it's interesting. It was very, very interesting. So moving that, in, so any thoughts on this acting exercise that I do, Roxy? No, I think it's great. I think that I, I like that it is, um, specific so you know you're not just saying like a lot of coaches and teachers will be like observe people but yeah. what does that mean or look like so I like the steps uh, for it I like that it gets progressively more interesting and you get to use your imagination more uh because walk before you run and uh I think it's great yeah also again giving you a compliment uh dame 5271 says Sean might make a good cue for bond Ooh. That would be great. I mean, my one of my heroes is Q right now, which is John Cleese. So just saying, they seem to like you, Sean. Well, thank you. Mr. Fantabulous, do you have any two cents on uh, this uh, acting exercise thingy? Um, you know, just Great. hearing it all is so interesting. I am observing the content of the show as much as I am observing the tech aspects on my end as well. So, um yeah, I think we're running we're running yeah. a good ship here. The fans seem to be engaging. And again, we thank you guys so much for your patience as we uh, and your engagement. It's very very important to us yeah. to keep keep the ship afloat, even if the world's a little interesting right now. So uh, we're having fun. And we hope you are too. Uh, and so to wrap this up, I'll tell a I'm story. I'm Maria Menounos. When I was on Twister. Uh, oh my gosh. Uh, nothing. When, when the fans didn't hear it. We had a moment where Maria popped in just to say hi, and we're back to Sean's story of the set on Twister. <laughs> hi, Maria. Uh, so I was Hello, Maria. And the uh, and so a lot of times we would just be in the background of things that were happening, and there was a very specific fight between Bill Paxton and Carrie Elways, and all we had to do was react off of their behavior, which was very. Tense. They were enemies in the movie. He would, Carrie was the bad guy, Bill was the good guy. And we would all just stand there and observe. And we'd have to obviously get a lot off of what they're doing. We know they don't like each other and they're enemies. And so we didn't have any lines whatsoever. And we just had to react within the parameters of what we had kind of set up for each one of our characters. And obviously we had to do it looking at fake tornadoes, you know? We had to look up in the sky and see danger coming and observe, you know, what the, and, and then deal with the people who were running around and scared and how they looked. We were driving through uh, the torn down town and the way we would look at the, the people who were the background actors and how they were being bummed. So we, that was a lot of what we were doing was just observing and reacting off it in a truthful way based on what we're seeing. And with justifications, so. Uh, so let me ask, let me ask you because I just this just popped in my head um, on that story. As I'm remembering that most productions are shut down right now, and on this, can you decide to observe people, uh, reality TV stars, and how they're interacting, like oh, with the ball or any 
anything right now as we're in quarantine lockdown. Can hey, you listen, put on the TV value more? I love like experimental shows. Like I did watch the uh I did watch the what's the one with the uh, uh no the the one on Netflix where they can't see each love other. Is oh, blind. Yeah, I watch Love is Blind and I love watching Love Island. And it's just, I mean when you see these people behavior sometimes, it doesn't matter what they're saying. It doesn't matter. Can't you see right. what they're doing? Like this one guy's like, it's all good. It's all good. And the woman you can tell just doesn't want to be with him. And he's like, I think we're great. And you're like, in what world do you think that's happening? I know who you're talking about. I feel so bad for him. So bad Jessica for him. Jessica was horrible to him. But then he kept on saying, I'm not young. I'm not young. And then you see his behavior and you go, yes, you are. You are. You're 24. Come on. Yeah. Right. And you go. And so, but again, that was, it didn't matter what he was saying. Right. Roxy. It didn't matter that he yeah. was saying I'm old for my age. I'm old for my age. It just didn't matter. So it's really about what you, so listen, in life, I'll give you this lesson, everybody. It's not what you say. It's how you say it. It is how you say it, just like me saying fine at the beginning. I mean, that's really, really 100% what it is. So study human behavior, use your imagination to justify and come up with stories. You will have free acting class all day long. And even in these times, we are going to have to go to gas stations. We are going to have to get food and stuff. See how people are reacting. Are they just kind of you know, going, I'm just got to get my stuff and get out of here. Do they seem really afraid? Do you go, wow, this person doesn't care about this at all? You know, you can still see stuff and you can see stuff on reality TV. To do that, mute a, mute a, mute a reality show, especially a dating type show. Mute it and see. I mean, it's really funny. So anyway, that is uh, Observation 101 from uh, Professor Q, Sean Lane. They're saying in the chat that you wouldn't tell us even if you were a secret spy. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, Glenn Weston and Dame all seem to agree. Sean Spy. Well, of course I'm not. Weston Ira says that would explain the Knives Out sweater. I guess you do have a Knives Out sweater on. I do. And I forgot to talk about my sweater because I had to do comfy. We need comfy right now, right? Yeah. Uh, hey, Al. Don't there I know it? All right. So where can we find you, Miss Phenomenal? Well, at home mostly, but uh, everywhere at Roxy Stryer. Uh, I'm, I'm pushing out a lot of content on my YouTube, youtube.com slash Roxy Stryer. And... Uh, yeah, I will. Be, I've been getting a lot of questions. We will be doing DC movie news this Friday for our sister network, Popcorn Talk Network. Uh, Mike, Adam, and I are all going to be there, so make nice. sure you tune in for that also. Mr. Fantabulous? Yeah, you guys can find me on. I still need to merge those Instagrams and Twitters, but uh, Instagram at Jeffrey Crane Graham and Twitter at Jeffrey C Graham. And uh, can you guys hear me okay? Thumbs up if you can. Yeah. Awesome. Great. And um, I'm doing a new series here at AfterBuzz called Quarantine with the Stars, where I'll be interviewing actors, writers, directors about what they're doing during this time. So make sure you guys check that out. And uh, we'll be here next week talking acting. So uh, we love you guys. We appreciate you for it. Sean, what about you? And I, you can find me at Sean Whalen Actor on every platform, except on TikTok. I'm at Sean Whalen 19. So. As always, thank you for letting me be part of your journey. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank Do you for tuning out? in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.